What's going on guys, Tyler here, and today we're gonna to take a closer look at investing in MLPs. This video was inspired by a viewer named Matt who asked me to take a closer look at some of the popular MLP options on the market right now, as well as the difference between investing in individual MLPs compared to MLP ETFs. So thanks for the comment, Matt, and this is exactly what we're gonna get into today. So first we're gonna start taking a look at MLPs versus MLP ETFs. And this is pretty interesting because this is actually one of the few times in investing where I am not looking to diversify my investments. I actually think ETFs are a bad call for MLPs, but we'll get into exactly why here in just a minute. Then we're going to take a look at three MLPs that are pretty popular right now and try and figure out whether these really are some good long-term investment candidates for your MLP investments. And then finally, we're going to wrap things up with two MLPs that I'm very excited about and actively investing into. So uh, let's get right into it. Although, first of all, I should say that this is a follow-up to my previous video where I broke down the basics of Master Limited Partnerships, or MLPs, for the average investor. So if you don't yet fully understand the tax consequences and benefits of MLP investing, I would highly recommend that you start off with that previous video and then come back to this one to get into the more nitty-gritty stuff. So when it comes to ETFs, I'm generally in favor of them in most areas of investing. And this is because when you pick the right ones, they are low cost and they help you quickly diversify your investment across large parts of the market. And my reasoning for this is that I don't trust myself to stock pick. So for those set it and forget it kind of investments like a Roth IRA or similar investment accounts, ETFs and index funds are a great way to make sure you just secure your fair share of the market's returns and you don't miss out by selecting the wrong stock. But I don't feel this way about MLPs because they have a very unique tax treatment. And when you invest in MLPs through an ETF, you miss out on all of those tax benefits. So let's take a closer look at what this means. As we know, MLPs offer tax advantage and tax deferred distributions. When you invest into an MLP, you become a partner and any income that the MLP makes is passed directly to you, which means the MLP doesn't have to pay any taxes on that income. Plus, since you're a partner, you also get a share of the business's depreciations, costs, and things like that. So not only are you receiving pass-through income, but you're also getting to deduct the amount of taxes you pay on that income based on the costs of the MLP's operations. And what this means is you end up paying taxes on a very small portion of those MLP distributions. The rest of it is tax deferred since it's given to you as a return of capital, which is something I explained in detail in my previous video. So as an investor of individual MLP stocks, you get really high distributions with very low immediate tax costs. But because of this, you also have to remember that if you choose to sell your MLP investments at any point, you'll end up paying taxes on all of those distributions that had been tax deferred for the years prior. So this is important to keep in mind because if you don't plan on holding your MLP investment for a long period, you're gonna end up paying those taxes one way or another. It's just a matter of when. But the magic of MLPs is that they will have eventually paid you more in dividend distributions than you paid initially to acquire the stock. And most MLPs have annual distributions around 10 to 15%. So in most cases, you can expect this process to take from seven to 10 years, give or take. And that's assuming the stock price doesn't increase at all over that time. But once you hit that ROI, MLPs really start to pay off. And that's because after receiving so many returns of capital, your cost basis can only drop as far as zero. Once it hits zero, it's not gonna get any lower. So that means there's a certain point where you're gonna owe the maximum amount of taxes on that investment. Anything after that, you're only paying a capital gains tax rate on your distributions, which will mean you're still getting a pretty significant dividend distribution compared to other stocks. So what I'm saying here is to really get the full benefits of investing in MLPs, you have to commit to holding them for at least several years because if you sell them short of that, you're just gonna end up paying the taxes that you would have owed earlier if you held a different investment. So it's really not worth the trouble to be investing in MLPs and trying to get those tax advantage dividends if you're not gonna hold them for the time it takes to really, uh, really have them pay off. So how does this relate to MLP ETFs? Well, when you invest into an MLP through an ETF instead of directly into the MLP, you don't get the same tax benefits of becoming a partner of the MLP. And because of that, any dividend income you receive is not going to receive the same tax benefits. So that means you're going to end up paying capital gains or income tax on those dividend distributions, even though they've technically come from an MLP. Since they're coming to you through an ETF, you don't get any of those tax deferred benefits, which means your dividends are going to be a lot less than they would be if you invested directly into an MLP. Plus, some of the more popular MLP ETFs like AMLP or AMJ have expense ratios of 0.85%. So you are getting these average dividend distributions that kind of represent the MLP market, but you're losing that nearly 1% from management fees, and then you're losing an additional 15 to let's say 20 or 25% from the income taxes or capital gains taxes you're paying on the distributions. So at the end of the day, you're losing nearly one third of your possible MLP distributions because you're choosing to invest in them through an ETF. 
And the question Matt raised in his comment is, is it better to invest in an MLP and deal with the, the headache of, of trying to calculate your cost basis and make sure you're reporting it correctly every year? Or is it better to just invest in an MLP ETF and accept that you're gonna get slightly lower distributions in exchange for not having to worry about the, uh, the complicated tax, tax situation? And my first thought is to don't let the fear of dealing with these complicated tax situations scare you from investing in MLPs directly, because that's what it's going to take to get those higher percentage returns or uh, distributions, I mean, every year. So from a convenience standpoint, it really comes down to your personal preference of whether you're willing to put in the time to get the extra return on your investment, or if you'd rather just take the easy way out and uh, purchase everything through an ETF. So I really think if you're looking into MLPs for those long-term tax benefits and uh, the current tax advantaged income, then you really should be sticking with individual MLP investing instead of investing through ETFs. If you're purely an income investor, there's plenty of other options out there for finding things that can produce dividend yields at least comparable to MLPs, such as REITs or BDCs. So again, from a tax perspective and a short-term cost perspective, investing in MLPs directly is the way to go, especially if you're considering holding this investment for several years to come. If you're just interested in income for short-term timeframes and you don't really have your heart set on MLPs, then I would say explore your other options and make sure MLP ETFs are really the best choice for you when it comes to costs, taxes, and uh, the preservation or growth of capital. So that's my logical and tax-oriented argument when it comes to MLPs and MLP ETFs. But I also have another problem with MLP ETFs that deals with MLPs as a whole. You see, most of the MLP industry deals in gas and oil and natural resources and similar things like that. And more people and more importantly, industries recognize that climate change is a real threat. And there's things that we're doing involving those, uh, those materials that are directly causing our, our global warming issues. The more I think that this industry is not one to be investing in for the long term. I mean, we've seen Amazon recently pledge to be carbon neutral by 2050. Um, Pepsi recently committed to be 100% renewable energy by 2030. So we're seeing these industry leaders switch to greener and greener energy sources, and they're doing it soon. You know, 2030 is only a few years away. So I don't know when industries like oil and gas will begin to feel these effects of all these industries switching to greener sources, but I feel like it's going to happen at some point, whether it's 10 years, 15, 20 years in the future, it's going to happen. And like I said, MLPs are best suited for those long time spans, such as seven to 10 years, and ideally much longer than that. So when I'm investing in an MLP for that kind of time period, this is a serious concern I have with investing into these oil and gas based MLPs. Now that said, this is purely my own speculation and many MLPs have actually come out and said that they don't anticipate the decline in oil and gas to be as significant as people think it might be because of the switch to greener energy. So that's at least a little bit comforting. But despite my concerns, there are definitely still a lot of profitable MLPs in operation right now. And especially because of the crash we saw with COVID, a lot of these businesses are really undervalued. So it could be a great opportunity to be looking into MLP investments. So we're gonna take a look at three of the most popular MLP investments right now, which are Enterprise Product Partners, Energy Transfer LP, and Magellan Midstream Partners to see what they have going on that might suggest they have a good or not so good uh, long-term investment opportunity. Now, what I think is interesting about these three MLPs in particular is that they're all in the midstream category of the supply chain. And this means they're not upstream, which is where the companies would actually be extracting these resources from the earth. And they're not in the downstream, which is where they would, they would be uh, selling and distributing them to consumers. So they're in the midstream, which just means they're storing and transporting and collecting the resources to distribute to everybody else. This means they're just the middleman and they're not reliant on the cost of these actual commodities like the upstream and downstream partners would be who are selling these commodities for a profit. They're purely holding and helping to transport these resources. And to do that, they just charge fees for these other businesses involved. So they typically have a much more stable business operation and much more consistent profits, which is a really good thing for anyone looking at these from an investment or I'm sorry, for uh, an income investing standpoint. And again, with what we've seen from COVID in the last several months, it's good to see that these are kinds of businesses that can withstand the kind of uncertainty and crises that something like COVID can bring to the economic markets. So first up, we're taking a look at Enterprise Product Partners, who, like I said, are a midstream player in the oil and gas industry. They deal with the storage and transportation of these materials. And like some of the other MLPs out there, they have a huge network of pipelines throughout the US that allow them to transport these materials across the country. And even amidst the pandemic, they've maintained enough cash to have 60% more cash on hand than necessary to continue paying out their dividend distributions as intended. The demand for their services is pretty rock solid. And in fact, some sources say that the demand for gas is actually increasing in foreign markets. EPD has also maintained an increasing dividend for several years. And even though the price has been a little bit flat lately, it looks like they have a pretty good stronghold on the market and they should be able to maintain the profitability for at least the foreseeable future. 
Next is Energy Transfer LP, which again is a midstream player in the oil and gas industry. And just like EPD, it's been able to hold more than enough cash lately to continue paying out its dividend distributions as intended. And it looks to be in pretty good shape financially. Interestingly, Energy Transfer has been aggressively expanding its pipeline network, which will allow it to move more volumes of resources throughout its system. And this is great because as we've said, they don't need the price of oil to be high in order to increase their profits. They're gonna become more profitable the more volume of oil and gas they're able to transport and distribute throughout the nation. So as they're aggressively expanding their, their pipeline, this is gonna to translate to more profits in the future. With this growth strategy and a solid history of increasing dividends, this is a pretty attractive option for income investors. Not to mention their current dividend distribution is about 20% annually. My only issue here being someone who wants to see capital appreciation in my investments is that the price has been pretty flat for the last couple of years. And even before their peak in about 2015, 2016, it seemed to be pretty inactive as well. Next is Magellan Midstream Partners, another strong candidate from the midstream gas and oil industry. Magellan actually has the largest pipeline system in the country when it comes to transporting refined gases. So this is a huge advantage over other MLPs who are in the same sector. Plus, they've increased their dividend a total of 70 times since just 2001, and they plan on continuing to do so in the next several years. And what I think is the most impressive about MMP is that they have one of the strongest credit ratings of any MLP. Most MLPs carry a lot of debt, and the fact that MMP has a really strong competitive advantage here shows that they should be pretty well equipped to continue paying out their dividend distributions, and they should be pretty resilient and flexible when it comes to changes in the market or expansion in the coming years. All of these MLPs have taken pretty big hits from the COVID pandemic, which could suggest that it's a good time to pick some of these up at lower prices and secure yourself some higher dividend distributions in the future. I did a lot of research on these MLPs in particular using SureDividend.com, so if you guys want to dig deeper on some of these, I'll leave a link to that in the description. But now I'm going to tell you about the two MLPs that I'm very excited to be investing in right now. First is Cedar Fair, ticker symbol FUN, and they own and operate a handful of uh, amusement parks, water parks, hotels, and things of that nature. As you might expect, they took an enormous hit with the COVID pandemic, and that's the exact reason I'm investing in them so aggressively right now. Despite the huge financial difficulties of no one wanting to gather in an amusement park right now, they've actually been able to reopen a few of the parks and have been able to remain profitable in this time. In fact, they just recently announced that they would be able to last through the entire year of 2021 if absolutely nothing changed in the current environment. Now, I'm definitely hoping and expecting that things will continue to trend back to normal a little bit as we get into 2021. And by the end of 2021, I definitely hope we'll be mostly back to normal. And at this point, I'm expecting Cedar Fair will return to the traffic and income that it has been seeing in recent years before the COVID pandemic hit. So from my perspective, if I can invest in Cedar Fair at around $30 where it's at now, then I can be securing myself around a 12% dividend yield on that investment in the future when Cedar Fair returns to normal. So this might be a riskier short-term play, but I also enjoy that Cedar Fair is an MLP that's not involved in the oil and gas industry. So if you wanna learn more about Cedar Fair, I gotta give credit to PPC Ian, a fellow YouTuber who did a pretty good video about explaining um, the benefits of investing in MLPs. And in it, he explained why he was investing into Cedar Fair. And that's what initially got me turned on to it. So I'll link this uh, video in the description if you wanna check it out from him. And the second MLP I'm really fired up about right now is called Inviva, ticker symbol EVA. I'm really excited about Inviva because they produce industrial wood pellets that serve as a more sustainable alternative to coal. Now coal is responsible for producing 40% of the world's electricity, but it's actually one of the single most harmful fossil fuels that we use. And because coal is so deeply rooted in our energy practices, it's one of the biggest things standing in our way to achieving greener energy around the world. So I like Inviva not only because they're producing the solution to this problem, but also because they're the world's single largest producer of these wood pellets. This will give them a huge competitive advantage over anybody else trying to offer this product as the demand for greener energy sources continues to grow. So I see this as one of the few MLPs that's actually working towards a healthier environment, and I think that's only going to drive their price up more as it becomes a more important issue. Their dividend yield is a little bit lower at about 8%, but with a pretty strong history of increasing their dividend distributions, this is an MLP I'm really happy to invest in for the long term. So that should do it for this video, guys. Um, in terms of a disclosure, if I wasn't clear enough, I am invested into both Cedar Fair and Inviva. I am not invested into um, EPD, ET, MMP, or any of the MLP ETFs we talked about. If you're investing in MLPs, leave me a comment below and let me know which MLPs you've got your eyes on right now. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel for more videos about some of these niche investment topics, as well as general investment talk. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.